Rockstar stuff right was the most difficult thing. In fact, I said to the studio quite early on, let's get these songs done to make sure this film's gonna work. We found out that Jonathan Davis was very interested in, in effect, spreading his wings and doing a score. We were on before they even started casting. Yeah, it was, we had to start doing music before we were shot, before they knew who was doing what. So we basically set the vibe, I guess. Yeah, with direction from Michael Reimer, the, yeah. the director, he told us what he wanted for the songs. Well, we spent a long time thinking about what an 18th century French noblewoman would sound like, you know, a turned vampire would sound like in the present. <laughs> Some here when we were in town, and the others is when we were out on the road. We actually did a couple songs going down about 50, 80 miles an hour down the road, bouncing in the back of the bus. Two o'clock in the morning down the Jersey Turnpike. Yeah, trying totally to play. just trying to play. Um, yeah, glad we both came together, and it was it was like a rock vibe. We did these rock songs, and Richard totally brought something totally different. It made me think totally different at what I do. Michael Reimer directed us to only write just write songs that were inspired by inspired by the story and he had specific um, emotions that he wanted us to get across and specific things he didn't want us to do. I guess my main instruction to them was don't be too literal about the songs. It really wasn't that hard. I would just think about being alive for seven or eight hundred years and what it would be like. You'd have no really no friends. You'd be very lonely. You'd think life really sucks. You can't die. But I I lived in New Orleans for a, a year or so. Of course, I had to familiarize myself with Anne Rice. This is the first time I've ever um, came in almost in a way as a session singer or just as a singer, not someone who was writing uh, the song. And it was a different thing for me, and I probably wouldn't have done it for just anyone. But since it was Jonathan and we had a relationship and he wanted me to do it, and this song in particular, um, I agreed to it. You see, I cannot be mistaken because I'm not the only one. We walk amongst you feeding raping Must we hide from everyone? I respect the hell out of Jonathan. I think he's fantastic. And in fact, yeah, his first record was one of the inspirations for me to start delving into this genre of music, whatever you want to call it. Just get a little bit more aggressive, a little darker, a little bit heavier. I hear it fading, I can't speak it, or else you will dig my grave. I love Anne Rice, I, I love her books, I've read all the Vampire Chronicles, and uh, yeah, I just, I think it's a, a wonderful world that she creates in her, in her stories. I was asked if I would be interested in singing a song uh, on the Queen of the Dam soundtrack, and I said, of course I would, because I'm such a big fan of Anne Rice. I've read all of the, the whole chronicle, so I felt an honor. Then your body will be mine. One of the things I noticed when I was listening to the versions um, that he had sang over was the lyrical content of the songs that um, he co-wrote. I thought it was really fitting to the actual book because um, he does become, you know, a rock star in the book and he does perform and he sings about um, being a vampire and, you know, hunting upon people. And so Jonathan incorporated those things into the lyrics, which I thought was very important. It was a lot of fun for me to sort of interpret something that, that he wrote. You know, I, I didn't want to do it exactly like he would have done it. I tried to kind of give it my own flavor, but since he did write the song, it was very different from something that I, I would have written. 
the first thing was the concept, which was in the book. It's in an old-fashioned concert theatre. Um, couldn't do that because of the immolations. We have vampires exploding, and uh, you just can't have fire inside like that. Um, but I also thought, gee, this concert has to be sort of the concert of all concerts. I was inspired by an event that happens every year in the California desert called the Burning Man. So rather than do it in a, in a theater, we put the concert into Death Valley. When Michael started to research stuff, he went to these, you know, goth clubs in LA and he went to Anne Rice's Halloween ball and he just, it was a big eye opener for him. And even in terms of when we were in Australia and we had to get people like extras or, you know, we had to get 3,000 extras and like that, suddenly 3,000 people in black, all in black, turn up in the middle of the desert. And it's quite a sight when you see literally 3,000 people get off, you know, 20 buses, and they all start walking towards you on this very flat plain of desert. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> First of all, how great the crowds were. They're, they were they were there for three nights from six to six. Outside, really cold, wearing scanty goth outfits. And it was unbelievable how they were just really into it. They, they learned the lyrics. And they were amazing too, great crowd. Like they really loved it. And you know, we played the uh, we played the songs over and over and over again, as you do because you're, you're trying to make a film. And they never they never got bored. They just kept kept going, kept shouting and screaming and having a great time. It was fun. Like when you walk on the stage, even though you weren't doing anything like me, I'm the producer, I'm just walking around a little bit in the background, you feel the power of you're on a stage and there's a bunch of people out there and there's and you start to feel almost like that rock star thing. Even though they're extras and they're, you know, <clears throat> They're shouting because they've been told action. It doesn't matter. It was just incredible. And also because I guess the music was like stadium level. And I, I was trying, I was miming, so I was trying not to sing. But I kept singing. And by the end of two days, I had no voice left. Absolutely just shreds. I couldn't even speak. It was the most complicated thing we did, but we were very prepared for it, and it was actually the easiest thing that we did. That we didn't ever fall behind uh, there, even though it was really complicated. score captured both the the visceral aspects of being a vampire but also this kind of like perverse sexiness that, that vampirism has. Jonathan had never scored a film before so he's been learning a lot about orchestral scoring techniques and conducting and, and all of this and he's he's been uh, a more than willing student he's, he's been a quick study. <laughs> That work? That's way better. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's way better. It's nice I don't I don't have to make conventional songs where you got a verse, chorus, do this. It's like whatever, just whatever fits the scene. And it's a challenge. I mean this is a great sort of movie to go crazy with on the score and these guys have really just taken it to another level. The orchestra is a very dark orchestra. We're skewing it toward the bottom end of the orchestra. It's gonna be a very large bass section, big cello section, more trombones than the norm, lots of French horns, no upper woodwinds, all lower woodwinds, 
contra bassoons, contra bass clarinets like that. It just gives it kind of a roar. Emil Richards, uh, our head of our percussion section, had taken the guts of an old piano and just sits there and smacks it with a big mallet and the strings rattle and resonate. My fans would definitely dig this. It's just a different side of me. Um, it's not that far of a departure, my singing style or anything like that. I think it's, they'd be interested in just seeing what I like to do by myself, separated writing with Richard. And I think it's, in fact, more emotional. So I think they'll dig it. You just gotta come out and check it out. I hope y'all do. Wow, King, way 